Okay, so probably the most important reusable material is, or not reusable, uh, ongoing material is paper towels. I use a lot of them for what we're doing. So there's all kinds of ways to cope. Um, you'll go on the videos and see these guys laying out precision marks on the paper bullshit. You see people, you know, just coating like like it's like coating is coating. You just gotta put the materials down. You the major thing that I found is the big problem is if you don't mix the pigment well enough after it's it's in it like so this is a stock solution pigment if you don't mix it well enough you're gonna run into all kinds of problems so I do the paper towel over the home, uh, dollar store jug of mixed stock solution burnt umber and I do the old 50 shakes this is actually the most important part of creating gum prints and you know everybody has their ways but trust me on this one I've done a few mistakes and it all has to do with not mixing the pigment well so now I've got I'm gonna coat um, almost a 16 by 20 size sheet so I know that I need three millimeters of pigment four millimeters of gum and three millimeters of ammonium dichromat to mix so I, I mix the living crap out of my pigment there it's mixed nicely put it aside I keep this paper towel and I take a 10 cc um, measurement and there we go they harden you open up your burnt umber so this is burnt umber and I'm going to take three mils out and I did our three cc's and I just looked there to three cc's and I pour it into a secondary dollar store container and then I'm pretty much done with my stock solution burnt umber so one tube one tube to 45 milliliters is um, Christina Anders formula for your stock that's what I use I, I agree I agree with that mixture now what I found in my world I mix in about 15% more gum than pigment so I'm gonna to go to four mils or maybe even 20% four mils of gum okay I put it aside there now the real caustic crap is the ammonium dichromate be very careful with this folks this is the shit that you don't want to get on your hands you don't want anybody around this stuff and it is in mixture to three to the same as the pigment level so three cc's okay mix into the dollar store container I pour the old stuff back into it the brown container okay so I know I'm gonna have to wash all these things dollar dollar store jugs and now paper towel again and here's the secret for me anyways 50 more so you shake the living crap out of it you want the dichromat the pigment the gum to mix as one and you want it smooth and you put the paper towel around because some of these dollar store lids there's a reason why they're less than a dollar they leak okay so this is actually the most I like it's silly that this is what it's all about but this is it in my world 
So you can see it's leaking a bit, who cares? Now we've got the working solution. Okay? Now, you're going to see a lot of videos where people sit there with these beautiful Japanese brushes and they just like literally lay it down, lay it down. It's magic. I'm telling you, screw that. Lay it down fast and get it all over the paper. So I haven't made enough pigment for this size sheet. You don't see me obsessing about how I'm laying this down. I'm getting it over the whole paper. So let's say my image area is here. I'm going to stay with that. I'm going to get all my pigment on. I could have mixed a little bit more for this size of sheet. Okay. And I'm just laying it down fast and furious, back a bit, and then I go to my nice, beautiful brush that's really nice, and I just do one coat. Bob's your uncle. That's how you coat paper in my world. Everybody else's world could be different, but it's, it, it should be just as fast as that, and then the paper goes off to a separate area and I will do, in any working day, 10 to 18 sheets at a time. So I'll put the sheets there. I measure out my 16, 20 sheet of paper, and I realize I may, may need three mils per. Now that the brush is charged, you don't, you know, it, it would go down a lot faster. And I will do 10 or 15 pieces of paper in a half an hour. So that's what, in the morning, I, I get myself psyched up to come in. So I, on the way to work, I just kind of think, okay, I'm gonna lay down 15 okras. I got all the films already done out there. I'm all ready to go. My paper has been pre-shrunk the day before. It's been cut down to my size that I want. I know what color I want to lay down as my base, and it's usually okra that I want, or burnt umber, a flesh tone, you know, something that's going to create a flesh tone is in, in, in the portrait world is very important. And then I, I, I coat 15, and then I go for a half an hour and have a coffee, something to eat, relax, or just do business, and then I come back down and go into the next stages. So this is really as hardcore as it's gonna get. You don't need anything more than this to do gum, gum bichromates. You can mix in multiple colors. So this is pink through yellows, different yellows, different magentas. The weapon of mass destruction is a phthalo blue, green shade with a burnt umber or a um, burnt umber or a sepia. Wicked combination. You're mixing the yellow of the burnt umber against the blue. And we all know that in color theory, blue and yellow are complementary colors. So, you know, it's not like we're mixing the two together to create a gray. What we're doing is laying one layer down of yellow, blue or brown creating an image and then laying another layer on top but because it's a wash off process and this is where most gum printers get confused it's a wash off process so when you wash off the blue what's left before from the day before is the brown or the yellow it will not wash off it will stay there so you now are working with two complementary colors so if you start thinking about this you can work with red and cyan you can wear green, magenta, yellow, blue, and if you start playing with these ideas, you can start creating any color palette that you want with just mixing colors. And sometimes I lay down the, the one color that I want to be complementary the most where I want your eye to go, 
It's the color I lay down. So, you know, in most cases, in portraits, it's your skin tone. So I'll lay down the skin tone first, and with the blue or the green or on top, I'll reveal the skin tone with water. And we'll see that in future videos.